Hi, I'm Tree and this is Stitchless TV. Today on Stitchless TV, I'm going to show you how to make a draped heart memory cushion made out of an upcycled t-shirt. Now, we already have a tutorial on how to make a draped heart when you fit it into a bodice, like this one that I'm wearing. But I wanted to make a sewing tutorial that was easy enough for anybody to do. Now when we do this today, we're going to be using the sew machine, but I think you could probably do this by hand. Is you need an old t-shirt. Now if you're making it for Valentine's Day, you might want to make it out of a red t-shirt, but I suppose it doesn't have to be, does it? And you need a, a woven fabric. I've got some calico with the heart shape and size of your finished cushion. And you need some stuffing or an old cushion to stuff your heart. Okay, to make the draped heart memory cushion, first of all, kind of cut out a template using a non-stretch fabric because it will help stabilize it and we use it as a, a template as well. Now, I always find it a good idea to press down the middle and then press where you want your center to be of your drapey bits. For our draped side, I want to use the back because I've got more fabric on the back because what happens is we go like this and everything becomes a bit smaller. So you may end up having to adjust the size of your cushion depending upon the size of your t-shirt. But let's see how we get on. So I think it's a good idea to first of all cut out what's going to be the back. So for the back I want to do a kind of, um, I think it's called an envelope cushion when it overlaps. But we're not going to do buttons, I'm just going to make sure that goes up high enough so everything's tucked in. That way it's easy for everybody to do. So let's say that this is the back of our cushion. I want my, my bit that comes up for the envelope to be about there. Now I'm not separating the side seams yet, okay, and I'm only cutting this out of one layer of t-shirt. So this is the back and this is just one layer. Of the t-shirt. Whoops. So what will happen is that that will form the back. And now when I cut out the rest of the back, I'm going to make it go much, much lower. I'll make it go to about there. So I'll cut that out now as well. So if I put that there, so I'm cutting it out of the front of the t-shirt because it feels as if there's um, more fabric on the back, yeah? And I've got the t-shirt the right way round, you may need to know that. So I'm going to about there so that when, when they overlap you don't see an opening, yeah? It will all make sense as we go along, hopefully. Fold that down, then that will give me a nice straight line. See, it is helpful having a pressed line there because then you can keep everything aligned and symmetrical. Right, so let's have a look. So let's have a look at what we've got. So we have the bottom half of our back and the top half of our back. This is the right side. So I'm hoping <laughs> that if 
I stitch that together there and that together there, then that can just be the back of the cushion and we can easily get it in and out. So we may as well stitch it together now. I'm just going to put a couple of little notches so I can keep track. So I'm only notching the t-shirt, yeah? I'm not notching into this. So I'm going to stitch that first of all in place. Now, if you're selling it on the sewing machine, you do really need to use a zigzag stitch. Now, I guess I should have tested it out, but this is only a stay stitch for me. Um, and you must, must use a stretch needle. So just as a stay stitch, lining up my notches, I'm just going to sew just to keep it in place. So I've got quite a small zigzag stitch okay so when you've done that put it on your template that calico template so put it on the heart template and make sure that it fits so we know that we've completed our back so we can just put that to one side and now we're going to focus on doing the front So that's what we've got left of the um, t-shirt and I've just cut open the front neck so we've got as much material as possible. Right, so what I want you to do is I've got the t-shirt right sides up and this is my back and I'm going to put my template so I put the wrong side of it to the right side of the material. Now when you've got it in a position where you think you've got as much of the material on the outside of it as possible, just put a little pin in the middle. And then what I want you to do is, it doesn't have to be exactly on this line, I just want you to stitch an upside down triangle like that make sure that everything's all nice and flat you haven't caught a sleeve in there or anything and using a straight stitch just follow a little bit bigger than your triangle or just do whatever um, size of triangle you think is right but don't make it too big because it becomes a hole that gets filled with the the drape of the fabric yeah so I'm make, making sure that I haven't got any fabric caught oh, underneath. And I'm roughly drawing out a triangular shape. It doesn't really have to be a triangular shape, I suppose. And then I'm just going to over sew where I started but always being careful I'm not catching any of that material because it's really easy to catch a little pleat so it should look like that so this next bit that we're going to do is really exciting because what happens is we cut out the triangle and we pull all the fabric through the hole and then pinning it at the edges when we like the drapes, trimming it back and then we end up with this gorgeous draped heart and it just isn't difficult. When you're just using the draped heart, it's easy. So this is the really fun bit, okay? So just double check, make sure you haven't caught any material that shouldn't be caught and then begin to snip into and right up to each corner of your triangle. And then cut away the excess and then I'm always a bit unsure that I've done it the right way round. And then you need to pull your t-shirt through that hole. 
So that's going to take a little bit of time. So what you end up with when you've pressed it is this, but we need it on this way round. Now I do recommend you doing this on a, you know, like a, a smooth wooden surface or something like that, because it definitely makes it easy when you've got to put it in. Now you can do this with anything, it doesn't have to be a t-shirt. Now you can roughly feel where your heart is underneath, but don't cut away any fabric yet, because you don't know where you're going to need the fabric. Now you do this in your own way, this is really good fun, you do this in your own way. So look, there's the heart underneath, and what we're doing is just put your finger on that triangle and start to create drapes like try and see where it naturally where it naturally wants to go and you know you'll keep you'll start doing it and then you'll change it and then you have another go doing something else but you're aiming for something that naturally just sort of drapes going around and then eventually filling the hole. So it looks like a mess at the moment, I know. <laughs> but, but it won't by the time we've finished, hopefully. So I'm just going to keep fiddling with this. So look, I'm pulling it out, not pulling, I'm easing it. coming away so I'm holding it down there and then I'm sort of doing this kind of thing and at the same time I'm being aware of where the heart is underneath so I'm going to have a fiddle with this and I'll show you when I've got something more to show you but basically I just keep going around look how I'm just going around I can put my finger there as well to create a, something to give it shape and then eventually you get to a point where you think, oh yeah, okay, I like that, I'm going to stop. Right, I think I'm going to stop now. So look, there's my heart underneath there. And under there. Now, the way that the pleats want to fall, you pin them with the pins going out. But don't overshoot where the uh, edge of the calico, the edge of the template is. Because what we want to do is, when all our pins are in place, we want to just be able to cut it out with the pins there, because then it makes life easier. So in some places there may be no, no pleat at all, or maybe there is. So keep following it around and pinning just inside the edge of the pleat, but not too far in actually. That might have been too far in. So you're just trying to keep all your pleats in place, so you get this nice swirly thing. Don't pull them too tightly as well, because otherwise it makes it really flat. And then I want to know where the middle line, the midline is. I just like to know these things, and that's the point. Right, so just work all around your heart, pinning it, like I said, to hold down those pleats. So all of my pins, the points of the pins are facing out and they don't go beyond the edge, but they are meant to be very close to the edge. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to cut away the excess just so we can get a bit closer to it. Right, so get rid of all your excess stuff. And it should be safe to turn it over. Right, now we can really see where we've got to cut, can't we? So very carefully, because you want to keep all those in position 
you don't want to cut your you don't want to break your scissors by going over the tip of a pin so just work your way around slowly Let's have a look. Woo, look at that. Right, so we've got all our pins in place. Now if you're hand sewing it, start to sew around the edge. Do some sort of running stitch or something. It's not going to stretch and it doesn't need to stretch because it's onto the, the calico. So we're just going to stitch using a large-ish stitch to hold it in place it's only to hold it in place now see how you get on with the the straight stitch sometimes when you have tricky fabrics it can be easier doing a zigzag regardless of whether it's um stretch or not uh, but if you are going to do a straight stitch make it quite big because it's only a stay stitch and it'll be easier so i'm doing the width of my sewing foot to the edge there as my seam allowance. As I go over where the pins are, I'm taking them off. I'm trying to get in a position so that you can see. So maybe don't, if you have a, a choice with your foot pressure on your machine, don't make it too heavy because then it will push the fabrics. But like I said, if you're struggling, use a, a zigzag stitch, but you should be okay. So make your way all the way around and make sure you're sewing on top of the, um, the fabric underneath and the top. I'm going to take that away. Now I think it's really important, the deep bit of that V. So needle in, lift up your work, swivel it around and then stop coming up on the other side. Now go all the way around. Now because you are sewing a stretch to a non-stretch, you are going to get a bit of movement. Now remember, it's the, the calico, the non-stretch yeah, fabric that is the template and is correct. So you can trim back all the bits of jersey, the t-shirt fabric, that overhang that so it looks nice and neat. So look, that wasn't too difficult, was it? Was it difficult? Now, remember I said, we do have a tutorial on how to make a draped heart bodice, which is the technique used for this and for this heart that's on my top. Now, normally when you have them on a, on a piece of clothing, they're not as big as this, but I mean, they could be, and they'd look great on the back of things. Actually I did do one on a jacket and it looks fantastic on the back of a jacket. So now all we have to do is attach our front to our back and then we're done. So that's the back and that's going to be the front. So we put our fabric right sides together so look, I flopped it so it went right sides together and then line everything up and then when you're happy with how it's all lined up you can get loads of pins and start pinning going that way going all the way around and then it's ready to sew. So sew with a slightly bigger seam allowance than um, sew it with a slightly bigger seam allowance than you stay stitched your pleats. And I'm not going backs and forwards. I'll just over sew it afterwards. Now just take your time. I'm still doing quite a large stitch. And I'm keeping track because I don't want it all to bunch up. So 
So if I feel it bunching a little bit, then I'll just lift it up and go back down again. And take the pins out as you go along. So we're going to pivot the needle and we hit the middle of the V. Lift up the foot, turn it around and come all the way around there. Now when we get to the well of the V of the heart, try and make sure you have put a pin that signifies the sort of central line. Be careful not to create a pin, a pleat by that pin, because that can happen. But it's not the end of the world if you do. So then lift it up with the needle in and bring it around. Now as you sew, just take your time and definitely take out those pins because the jersey, the t-shirt fabric wants to squash up to the pin and, I, and you need to sort of lift it up every now and again to stop that from happening and if you leave the pin in you'll get a little pleat by each pin, maybe. So we're coming to the end now. And we can over sew and go backwards and forwards. Right. Now you do need to snip into right into your V and you'll need to take away the excess from the point. And <laughs> it's not completely necessary because this is going to be a cushion. You need to make sure you're doing it the right way, actually. Um, you need to do little V's or just snips all around any curves. I mean, officially, they should be little V's. But I'm sure you'd be fine with snips. I've done my snips. And I'm going to turn it the right way round now. See, look, that was our access point. I don't need to tell you how to turn it the right way round, do I? But turning that bit, you want a nice point. So fold in one of those corners and then push it and you should get a nice corner. Now, I would like you to gently press the edges like this so that they look nice and sharp. So take it to an iron, lay it down and nicely press just around all the edges so it looks nice and flat. So do you know what? I have to own up to mistakes don't I? I should have done this the other way around so the overlap went down. So when you cut yours out, make sure you do that one first with the hem there. Anyway, do you want to see the right side? Look at that. That is very nice. And it actually could have easily been a bag, couldn't it? Right, so let's see if we can get a cushion in there. So I've got this square cushion, and I'm hoping that if I push the point down that end, and it may not hop, I'm going to try and get the point to go down there and I'm going to squash, tuck that bit in and see if I can get ooh, those other bits to fill the curves. So let me see. What a great upcycle project and Valentine gift. Now, thank you for watching Stitchless TV. This is a project that's good for beginners. Remember, you can sew it by hand. Or we've also got a tutorial on doing this, but then we apply it to a t-shirt. We just stick it on top of a t-shirt, which is very easy. Thank you so much for watching. See you again very soon.